First up, shipping yourself home. Thanksgiving, a time for families to get together and celebrate all the good things life has to offer. But bus tickets and airfare are beyond the means of the young man in our story. In the fall of 2000, this struggling art student comes up with a clever and creative way to get home, and it wouldn't cost him anything. Meet Ricky Smith. I had this plan. I get a box, a crate, big enough to hold me, and post it to my mom's. That means she'd have to pay cash on delivery when the crate arrives. Ricky enlists the help of his friend to execute his brilliant plan. Ricky stocks enough provisions for the five-hour, 1,500-mile door-to-door journey. The crate with Ricky inside is wheeled to the shipping office. His friend lies when it comes to listing the contents. And with that, Ricky's on his way. Ricky's crate, along with other air freight parcels, are loaded onto the 10 a.m. flight. All is going according to plan. But Ricky soon discovers traveling in a cargo hold is not the way to go. I would not want to be a piece of luggage ever again because it was so cold. My body managed to keep warm, but I swear to God, there was seriously icicles on my face. The cargo hold isn't pressurized. There's little oxygen at 35,000 feet, and the frigid temperature puts Ricky's life in danger. Ricky's foil blanket barely provides him with enough warmth to last a three-hour flight. On touchdown, he's exhausted and falls into a deep sleep. It's bad timing. I didn't, I had, I didn't even know I was at my mom's house. Good morning. Um, I have a package for you here. Package? Yes. What package? Uh, there's a $219 charge. $219 charge? Yep. You lost your mind? And my mom has no idea a package is coming. She's not about to pay $200 something dollars. So she said, she told, him to, she told him to take it away. Go, get it out of here. I don't want it. Get it off my property. The crate containing Ricky is sent to the uncollected cargo facility back at the airport. When he eventually wakes up, he realizes that everything isn't going exactly as planned. You know, I figured two hours later, I'm sitting in one place. You know, something has gone amiss. <laughs> and so I start freaking out. I start yelling, help, help me. You know, I'm banging, I'm banging on the crate and, and nothing, no, no one's hearing me. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm stuck in this crate. I don't know where. I could be in some basement somewhere. No! No! Can anybody hear me in here? Unfortunately for Ricky, the uncollected cargo isn't going to be handled over the Thanksgiving weekend. There is no one to hear his calls. He can't even kick his way out of the box as the crate is surrounded on all sides by other freight. Realizing he's trapped, all he can do is wait. By now, he hasn't been to the toilet for 10 hours. His empty water bottle is the last resort. Ricky is desperate. A day went by and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to sleep when I can. Another day goes by. I, I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna die. I, I really, really, really was worried I was gonna die. Three days go by, I don't hear nothing. It was horrible, it was, it was terrifying. Worse than any horror movie you've ever seen. By now, Ricky is hungry and extremely thirsty. Living through extreme conditions is a true test of survival. Meet Bob Spore. He's a former soldier from Britain's elite fighting unit, the Special Air Service. The average human being would need to consume two liters to 2.5 liters of water a day. Three days without water, you're a dead man. You really, very few people live beyond that. Without water, you soon slip into unconsciousness, you'll slip into a coma, and then you're dead. Desperate times call for desperate measures, so Ricky is driven to swig from his bottle of urine. It may have saved his life. 
It's not recommended to drink it, it you know, and eventually it will kill you because it backs up against the kidneys. Um, but it would allow you to survive maybe a few more days. After a fourth day of darkness, Ricky hears movement. Workers back from the holiday weekend. My throat was so dry I couldn't even yell. But all of a sudden I get this adrenaline rush. Hello. I mean, thank God they heard me. Because if they hadn't, and they had walked right back out of that warehouse, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Oh, thank, you. thank you, sir. Uh, Ricky is rescued, but the airline fines him $1,000. It is a federal offense to stow away on an aircraft, but Ricky avoids jail time as it's determined his stupid act meant no harm. Adding insult to injury, he's also charged extra for freight storage. He learns a valuable lesson about his future travels. You know, next time, I'm gonna take the bus. An amazing story of survival and stupidity, but is it true? And home in a box. If you think it's conceivable, like the man in our story, that you can send yourself somewhere in a crate, stowed in the depressurized cargo hold of an airplane, then you are completely wrong. Ricky would have been dead on delivery. The extremely low temperatures at 35,000 feet and the lack of oxygen would mean certain death. It just couldn't happen the way Ricky had planned. And if he was lucky enough to survive that trauma, it's doubtful he could have come out of storage after four days. This stunt, besides being extremely dangerous, is also illegal. But it hasn't stopped people from trying to stow away in this manner. We recommend buying a ticket.